if I could just bring us back up to 30,000 feet for a second, uh, I just want to talk about what we're afraid of here, you know, what, what we fear might happen. Uh, social media companies, and TikTok is unique in this, is not unique in this, gather a tremendous amount of user data and then use powerful AI tools to use that data to make eerily accurate predictions of human behavior and then uh, seek to manipulate that behavior. And that's something that it's not just TikTok, it's all our social media companies that are doing this. Ultimately, the solution is to enact comprehensive federal data privacy legislation that will prevent that kind of behavior or at least allow users to consent to it. And that is, I know, something that the chair is working on, the ranking member. I hope that this committee will act on that this year. The specific concern here, though, as regards TikTok, is that this type of capability falling into the hands of foreign countries uh, is something that has national security implications. And that's why Congress is getting involved on this issue. So I know that you have proposed Project Texas in an effort to alleviate these fears. So I wanted to ask some specific technical questions about Project Texas and the way that you believe that it will solve this problem. So uh, one of the things that you've said in your testimony is that part of Project Texas uh, will have engineers at Oracle going through the source code for TikTok. Uh, how large is that code base? Um, well, it's, it's not small, but um, it's not just Oracle, Congressman. We are also inviting other third-party monitors. We're in the process of figuring out who the best um, Sure. So are we talking, are. Uh, we're talking millions, tens of millions of lines of code? How big is the base? It, it is significant, um, but it's something that we believe can be done. And again, I want to say that I, don't, I have not heard of another, co another company, American or sure. not, no, no, that no, has no, allowed for this to happen. But, I mean, you're kind of in a unique position having to, to answer these concerns of Congress. So are they going through the code for just the app or the app and the server code? I can get back to you on the, okay. the technical details, well, but it's, it's, it's comprehensive, including the software that powers the, a lot of the software that powers the experience. And how long will that review take? Uh, I need to get back to you on the timeline, but we are uh, progressing quite well on Project Texas, and whenever we hit a milestone, I commit to be very transparent about it. Okay. So uh, I'm wondering, because I'm also concerned uh, as a software engineer about the process in which new code is introduced into the code base. Do you use a software configuration management system at TikTok? The, the, the way we uh, plan for new code to be done is that even before the code becomes live, it has to be reviewed. Um, the changes have to be reviewed okay, sure. by so the third-party monitor. So you're, you're talking monitor. about a, a code review. That was, that was good. That was another question I had for you. So the code review, is it done with a team of engineers or just with a single engineer? Oh, it's going to be a team effort. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's going to be done at Oracle or elsewhere? Uh, it's, it's going to be done in one of our transpar transparency centers so that we, you know, uh, we still need to make sure that the code itself is secure. And, okay. You know, uh, so so yeah. what I'm hearing you say is that even though the code might be written by someone not in the United States, before the code is integrated, it'll be reviewed in a code review by a team of engineers within the United States? That, that's the plan. Okay, and this, uh, back to the question about the software configuration management system, how do, you, how do you manage the integration of that code change into the rest of the TikTok code base? Uh, the long and short of it is we have built a team of American personnel um, with security credentials. The, the person who leads the team used to work for the Secret uh, no, Service, no, I for understand, example. but I mean, there's, there's a software solution for integrating those code changes into the code base. What's, what solution is that? I would need to check and one? get back to you on the details. Okay. Well, yeah. specifically, what I'd like to know is to make sure that this isn't something that TikTok has, has created uh, custom, which many companies do, because that would mean that you'd have to review the code, source code for that as well yeah. for security. Uh, how do you protect about, against threats like uh, the, uh, a malicious actor being hired not by TikTok, but by, uh, by uh, Oracle, for example, or by, uh, uh, by USDS? The, um, the approach that most companies take for these things is to have several layers of monitoring to make sure that everything, everything that somebody has reviewed is a secondary review so that one malicious actor is not able to create the damage that the malicious actor can do. But you rightly pointed out these kind of problems are industry-wide problems. Right. Every company has to deal with them. Okay, well, it, let me ask a specific question about that. I mean, I, I uh, in thinking about if I, if I were a malicious actor, a software engineer on one of your projects, how I would go about writing a, a malicious code. I wouldn't put it right there and say, hey, I'm malicious. Uh, I would put unrelated lines of code in different sections of the code that work together to do something malicious. How do you think that that could get caught? 
uh, again, you know, we have to rely on third-party experts to, to help us with that. Uh, I think there are enough experts who can catch a lot of these things. The work on security globally, on all data security, is never perfect. Yeah, I uh, but we can, we can have a lot of oversight oh. to keep it safer than any other experience. I, I, I appreciate uh, the effort. Uh, my concern, Mr. Chu, is I don't believe that it is technically possible to accomplish what TikTok says it will accomplish through Project Texas. I just think that there are too, too many uh, back doors through that process to allow that to be possible, and I think a malicious actor would succeed in inserting malicious code in there if they wanted to. I, but I hope we, I see we're out of time. I hope we get an opportunity to, to talk some more about this. I yield back, Madam Chair. Gentleman yields back. Chair recognizes the gentlelady from Michigan, Mrs. Dingle. 